A couple of weeks ago, Blue Eddy, who makes top-of-the-line solar panels and portable power stations or solar generators, contacted me and said that they had teamed up with Haybike, and they asked me if I'd be interested in doing a video on how to charge e-bikes using Blue Eddy, uh, Blue Eddy equipment. And you know, I've been thinking about doing a video like that anyway, so I jumped at the chance. I've already reviewed the Blue Eddy EB55. So I don't need to I don't need to review these in this video. The e-bike here, now the hay bike, there are dozens of reviews on um, on YouTube that you can watch on this. So I don't need to go do an in-depth review on it, but I do need to tell you about it so you understand why it's here and why Blue Eddy chose hay bike. First of all, just a little bit about this bike, and then you'll understand why uh, Blue Eddy teamed up with Haybike. Uh, this is an excellent quality bike. It's got a, a long wheelbase. I know you can't tell by the cam, the wide angle camera here. A long wheelbase, and that gives it a real smooth uh, ride, real easy to maneuver. It's got the four inch by 20 inch uh, fat tires on it, which makes it excellent on trails. Got the headlight, tail light, stop light. It's Shimano equipment with seven speeds here on the rear. Gives you uh, all that you need for uh, going up hills and on level terrain. It's got a 500 watt motor here. It's got a 12 and a half amp hour battery here rated at 48 volts. That's important for this discussion today. Nice rear rack. And of course, it's a folding bike. It folds up real small, makes it easy to put in your RV, in your van, in the back of your truck, whatever you like. This folds up into a real small package. It's got an LCD display, mechanical disc brakes front and rear, and it's got a thumb throttle on it. Also has a suspension seat post, which gives when you go over bumps. Nice, comfortable seat that I've already got some time on. And the seat flips up so you can get the battery out. It's got a decent sized rear rack and the bike came almost fully assembled. All I had to do was put the handlebars on. And I mean just just this down here. I didn't have to mess with anything up here. I just had to screw the handlebars into the uh, front fork here. That's all I had to do. Front tire was on it, rear rack was on it, fenders were on it, the lights were on it. It came re all, all assembled and ready to go. So this bike has a 500 watt rear hub motor and it's got a 12 and a half amp hour battery, which is normal for this size bike and for a folding bike. But by having a 500 watt motor instead of a 750 watt motor, you get a lot more range off of this bike. Now I, I, I charged the battery to full and I tested this bike here in my town until the battery went dead. I rode it up hills. I did the hill test on it to see what speed it would, it would, it would give me. Okay, one test I always do with these e-bikes when I review them is I try them up this hill. So I'm just gonna throw that in on this one. I don't expect it to do extremely well, but I do expect it to take me up that hill without pedaling. Yeah, let's see, 15 miles an hour. That ain't bad at all. Let's see what it does where it gets a little steeper up here. Got down to 12 and a half. Uh, you know what, this isn't bad. I rode it all around town. I put over 31 miles on it, almost 32 miles. Throttle only, no pedal assist at all. And I got that much out of this bike. And they say you get between 30 and 40 miles on throttle only with this hay bike does in their manual. And that's true because I live in a hilly city. So on flat ground, I think you would get 40 miles on this bike, just like they say in their manual. Now here's the deal though. It's got a top speed of 20 miles an hour, whereas some other bikes like this have a top speed of 24. Well, by giving you a little less speed, they increase the range on this bike. And 20 miles an hour is plenty fast on an e-bike. So I, I thought that was okay, and it is. 
But I got that range of 30, almost 32 miles. And if you look at my other reviews on other e-bikes where I did range tests, I only got like 21 or 22 when they had the 750 watt rear motor. So we didn't give up much on this bike at all, just a little top speed, but we gained 33% more range. Now this 12 and a half amp hour battery at 48 volts is 600 watt hours. This is a 578 watt hour power unit. And that's going to pretty much bring your battery up almost to full charge. Not quite because you got to hold something back here to protect the battery. But chances are when you get back to camp, your battery isn't dead because you don't want that to happen. You don't want to have to pedal home. Usually when I get back to camp, I usually have 40 or 50% left on my battery. So that means that this bike with Blue Eddy's smaller 500, EB55 here, is, is a really good match because you can plug it in and recharge it overnight and be ready to go again the next day again with a full battery. Now, people have asked me numerous times, can I just plug a solar panel directly into this battery and charge it up? No, you cannot do that. Uh, these batteries need to be well protected and they need to have the exact voltage for charging. I know there's a way to do that, to charge these e-bike batteries off of a solar panel by buying an adjustable voltage MPPT controller. But you're messing around with voiding the warranty on this battery and damaging the battery because you don't know exactly when that MPPT controller is gonna shut off and are you gonna overcharge your battery and burn it up? It's not suggested you do that. Do not do that. Always use the charger that came with your e-bike, always. Hey, just one little tip here. Uh, this is the power brick that came with this e-bike. When charging your e-bike, always plug the battery in first before you plug it into power. That way you don't get any arcing down here. Okay, this is putting out 97 watts, about 2 amps. And even though this battery is absolutely dead this will bring it up to almost full like i said you're not going to bring your your battery back dead like i did on this one i did it on purpose because i wanted to see how many miles i get out of this bike but you really need to charge the battery using the power brick because it's got all the safety features built into it one thing that really helps the situation is if you're plugged into solar while you're doing this <laughs> pass-through charging is okay as long as you have more wattage coming in from solar than you have going out to the e-bike battery. In this case, I've got 98 watts going out to the e-bike battery, and that's about what I've got coming in from the solar panel. That's all right, but I'd be much better off if I had a 200 watt panel instead of this, uh, this SP120 here from Blue Eddy. I wish I had their SP200 panel. That way I'd have plenty of watts coming in to keep up with this power station. So the way this would work is you'd go out and have fun riding 30 or 40 miles on the e-bike, come back that evening, plug it into the uh, Blue Eddy power station, it's recharging, and uh, the next morning you're ready to go out and ride again. And in the meantime, your Blue Eddy is back at camp charging up on the sun, so when you get back, you can charge it up again. Charging time like this would be about six or seven hours. So this is a pretty good match between the hay bike with its the size motor it's got and the size battery, plus you got the long range on the bike, and then with the Blue Eddy EB55. If you've got a bigger, more powerful e-bike, then just go with a bigger unit like the Blue Eddy EB70 or even larger. Well, I brought the hay bike battery home and finished charging it off that Blue Eddy EB55. I only had that Blue Eddy plugged into that solar panel for about 15 minutes while I was doing the review. So let's take this out to the bike now and see how it, um, how it registers on the uh, digital display. Okay, the display shows it is fully charged. Uh, that's within about, you know, 10 or 15% on the display because I'm sure the battery doesn't, isn't quite fully charged because um, I did have it totally dead <laughs> before I put it on the charger, but it's darn close. So how big a power unit would you need to charge your e-bike? Well, like I mentioned, this is a 12 and a half amp battery, 48 volts. And to figure out how big a power station you need, you have to multiply those two. 
So 12 and a half times um, 48 is 600. That's 600 watt hours. You would need a power station that's approximately 600 watt hours to recharge your e-bike your e battery. Now, of course, when you throw solar into the package, a couple, couple solar panels hooked to it, uh, that, that makes that so it's going to bring your battery to full charge. So if you have a bigger battery, like this 20 uh, amp hour battery over here, you would need a thousand watt portable power station to charge that one. If you weren't using any solar to back it up, you would, that's what you would need. So multiply the amp hours of your e-bike battery by the volts of your e-bike battery, and that'll tell you how big a power station you need to get. Well, my thanks to Blue Eddie and Haybike for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. This is something I'm doing all the time, <laughs> recharging the e-bike when we're out camping. Hope this helped you guys. If it did, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.